Hello everyone, it's ShadowDog. Welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're doing a sort of introductory and tutorial video on Raft, just a few of the tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way. Um, if there's anything in this video that uh, helps you make your experience a little bit better with Raft, then my job is done. Let's dive on in. When you first load into Raft, gathering resources as quickly and efficiently as you can should be your top priority. You're on a tiny little board with no food, no water, and nothing but a little plastic hook to save your life. You can increase your efficiency by casting your hook and trying to grab two items at once. You just simply wait for the uh, next item to come in line with your rope and pull it in just like this. Make sure you to do your best to grab every single barrel as they're loaded up with goodies and they're the only way before you get to their first island to get things like rock and scrap which you'll really need later on. Now you might be a little nervous when you first start off since you're stuck in the middle of the ocean with virtually nothing to survive and you might be tempted to get right into building a water distiller or a grill. Um, I'd encourage you not to worry. Um, the first island that you see, you can see one's just coming up now. That's going to have lots of fruit on it and that'll um, keep you sustained until you're ready to build your water purifier and your grill. The first thing you'd actually want to build is your trusty wooden spear. So once you get yourself 15 wood, or less than that, once you get yourself 8 wood and 3 rope, get that built and move it on over. Um, the reason for this is your raft is really small in the early game, and that big toothed submarine can take a big chunk out of it. Uh, if you don't have your spear, you've got no way of preventing that from happening, so get that spear up and going as soon as you can. Now if you're playing with friends and you're not the person that's hosting the game, I've run into a glitch a few times that I can help you deal with. Um, you'll find that when you're harvesting materials from the ocean, you'll wind up and try to throw your hook and it'll just fall flat on your feet like that. A quick way to fix that is to highlight your hook, hit the Q button, and then E to pick it back up again. That seems to reset it and uh, it'll work perfectly after that. Now when you're laying out your raft in the early game, space is really important. Um, you'll find it costs a lot to make a really large raft early in the game. Remember that some things can be mounted on walls, um, such as chests and even grills. Um, I fit this entire area with uh, two grills and a uh, set of four chests and even a water purifier all on one tile. Now it is a little dangerous to put so many things all in one tile in the early game because if Bruce, Bruce comes along and eats it, it's a bad day. Um, so I've, you notice I've laid it in one tile just to give a bit of a buffer if Bruce, Bruce comes along and uh, takes a bite out of your raft. Um, the nice thing with this is if you need a little bit more storage still, you can still do it. Just grab your storage boxes and you can use the back of this wall as well. It'll fit two of these plastic chests wide and you should be able to fit about six of them on overall. Now, if that razor tooth rascal does mistake your raft for a waffle, fear not. The business end of a building hammer is exactly what you need. Get yourself four plank and two rope, put that together. When you highlight it, just simply middle click and it'll automatically repair your raft. Good as new. The middle click button can also be used another way. When you're building things on your raft, um, people are tempted to open up the menu, select what you'd like to build, and then go ahead and build it. But an easier way is to simply point at the item you'd like to duplicate, middle click, and that will select it. You can then place it down nice and quick. That works really well if you're looking to place multiple objects very quickly. It can also be used with your paintbrush if you'd like to paint something. And you, and you would rather not go through and select the color, simply point at something that's the same color, middle click, and then move on to painting. If you've realized you've made a mistake and you'd like to unpaint what you've just painted, simply highlight something that isn't currently painted, middle click, and there you go. A quick tip to remember with storage is if you've got a stack of an item, you can hold down the shift key and left click it. It'll instantly move into your inventory. You can do the same to put it right back into the storage locker. And if you hold the right click down, you can use your scroll wheel up and down to select exactly how many of that item you'd like, making it easy to get the exact amount of the item for a certain recipe. Now storage can be really limited in the early game. If you're playing with a teammate and you're on co-op, um, just remember you can, if you have a partial stack of an item, like five nails out of 20, for example, you can simply drop that on the ground. If your teammate also has a partial stack and the total number would add up less than 20, he can pick it up. And you'll notice that it 
doesn't add anything to your inventory and it frees up a space for you, letting you spend a little bit more time on islands or under the water gathering resources. Having effective storage is also really important in Raft. It'll save you the time and trouble of running all over your Raft to try to unpack your inventory, figure out where all these potatoes are going, and uh, not, not waste a lot of time. Um, there's a few ways to set up effective storage. This is one of my favorites. I like to use um, little nooks that have got chests facing each other like that. It's a great way to pack eight um, chests into a one tile space. Um, you can also come up with effective labeling solutions for them here, which I've done along the top. Now I've got to apologize in my prior video on my raft tour, um, I gave you some outdated information. So with the different styles of walls, that the basic walls here didn't used to be able to do this, um, where you'd have the supports facing each other. Um, if you tried to fit two chests in here, they used to collide and you wouldn't be able to, to do this. You'd have to give a, an open space in between. When the smooth sides were against each other, it would work, but it wouldn't like this. Um, it seems that the game's been updated and you are able to fit a chest uh, facing another chest in this kind of a situation. You notice the gap is pretty small, but it does work. The gap is a little bit larger when you've got the smooth sides of the wall facing each other. It works just fine with the thatched walls as well, a nice big gap there, and even the fancier walls, it works there too. Now, when it comes to labeling your chests, um, I highly recommend it as, the, uh, as it saves a lot of time when you're coming back to your raft and trying to organize things, or when you're trying to craft, or uh, when you're heading out on an adventure and you're looking for the items that you'll need. Um, the first and probably easiest way is just simply using signs. If you leave a little bit of room above where your chests are, you can place these signs and use them as labels. Um, another way to do it is with paint. So if you use certain paints for certain items, you're able to quickly identify what is in the chest just simply by the color of it like that. Um, the third way is a little bit more sinister. It involves using name tags. Now name tags, unfortunately, are something that you can't exactly craft, um, but that you'll see whenever you uh, rescue an animal. I use the word rescue in an interesting context. So to generate one of these name tags, uh, just simply pick up an animal, hit the R button, type in what you'd like to name your name tag, and you're almost done. The last part is just simply getting the name tag off the animal. Um, you might want to close your eyes for this part. Oh look, dolphins. Great! Once your animal's sleeping, all you've got to do is walk up to it, hold down the E key, and you'll find yourself a brand new name tag. Simply put this name tag wherever you need the label, and you'll always know what's in your chest. Speaking of animals, if you're sick of seagulls coming in and eating your crops, your flowers, your scarecrows, um, there is a simple way to keep your crops protected. Um, seagulls are able to pass through one layer of floor or roof to get down to your precious little edibles. Um, however, they can't do two. So if you've got a roof with another roof over top of it, um, I'm not sure about the whole overhang situation, how much of that you need, but they're, they're not able to pass through two floors to get down to your potatoes. So if you'd like to keep them protected, use layers. Now this is a trick commonly used in raft, but if you find yourself building a large building and you don't want any bothersome pillars obstructing your way through, there is a way to build floating floors. So the trick with that is to simply build your pillars and use your diagonal floor pieces as you would normal. Build squares out of them, and once those are done, you can come in and take out the pillar and the floor will float. When it comes to keeping your raft safe, fortifying it's one of the best things you can do. A little known tip is that you don't actually have to fortify every single panel along the way. Each fortified foundation piece that you've got creates an invisible force field around it that is roughly uh, two uh, tiles wide. So you'll find if you fortify one tile, as long as it's on the perimeter of your raft, you can skip over one, two, three, four more tiles and fortify the fifth one. This will create an invisible barrier that will prevent Bruce from attacking any panels in the middle. Try it out. Now this one's one of my favorites. This is the most efficient garden setup that I could come up with while playing through, and it's the one that I currently use on my rafts. Uh, to build it, you want to first place your sprinklers down, right here. Um, build three wall sections behind it, 
And then you can place your two medium crop plots end to end heading out this way. Place your two tree plots and uh, you place the wall first so that you're sure that the tree plots won't be too far back. You just kind of butt them up against the wall. That'll allow you to run a pipe behind them. Once that's all set, just simply add three more medium crop plots to either side and you've got yourself a very efficient garden setup. Um, it wouldn't look like it would like this would work because it goes one, two, three, four units out. And as we all know, the sprayers can only shoot a total of three by three. But because this end crop plot is still partially on that third box, it still works. The sprayer is able to reach. You'll see if I harvest these strawberries and replace them. After a few seconds, the sprayer will kick in and water them just like that. A tidy raft is a happy raft, and nobody likes to see an exposed pipe lying around for no reason. So here's a few tips you can use to keep your raft looking neat and tidy when you're working with water pipes or fuel pipes. First off, did you know that your water pump can be placed against a wall? The only condition for doing that is that there's got to be open water on the back side of the wall so that the hose can reach in. It doesn't matter if the wall is there first, as long as there's exposed water behind the water pump, you can place it down, it'll connect to your pipes and work just as it should. This carries over to a few other items as well, such as sprayers and generators. If you've got a pipe directly behind a sprayer, as long as the receptacle is facing the pipe, that's on the back of the sprayer there, the pipe will modify itself to reach right through to the sprayer and that'll work just fine too carries over to generators too. Um, so the generators have got an open port on it here that will also accept a pipe through a wall. Um, the unfortunate design element with generators is that the battery life indicators and the fuel gauge are on the front of the unit. So if you'd like to be able to view those when you're using the battery generator, you've got to connect the pipe from the front just like that. So you might find it necessary sometimes to run your pipes through the walls without connecting directly to one of those devices. And there's a few convenient ways to do that. First off, if you're coming up from the floor, um, one of my favorite ways to partially cover an exposed pipe so you don't fall into the hole is to place a roof element on it like this. Cover the sides like that. And then you can cover the front of it a few different ways. You can either just use the fence element right there. Uh, that'll prevent you from falling in. Or if that doesn't look nice, you can also use these diagonal, um, the inverted diagonal walls, just like that, just to cover most of it. Um, that's something you can use when bringing a pipe through a wall as well. You can also do that uh, on the bottom, or if you were to punch a hole up top, you can run a pipe through there too. Um, one of the more popular ways to do it is the window elements. Um, so when you pop a window in, you can carry a pipe through. It actually misses the window, which is kind of funny. Uh, but the pipe will pass through even if it's not directly connected to a uh, device. You can do that on the top of a wall panel or on the bottom, just like that. When you're coming up to your first island and you haven't got the resources to build an anchor just yet, don't worry. You can often just kind of crash into it and your raft will stay stuck. You can have all the time you need to hop into the water, harvest some resources, battle Bruce, whatever you've got to do. Just remember to double check for the uh, fruit that's on the island so you can top up your thirst and your hunger. And when you're ready to go, craft yourself a paddle. And get going. Once you're back out onto the current, the water will take you and you'll be back on your journey again. Now if you are quick enough and lucky enough to build an anchor by the time you make it to your first island, definitely do it. Um, you'll have the chance to harvest much more resources from the island, and it'll put you in a much better position to advance in the early stage of the game. To craft an anchor, you'll need two planks, four rope, and four stones. Now, before you reach an island, the only way to gather stones is by barrels, so make sure you pick up as many of those as you can. We'll go ahead and craft our anchor. So to place the anchor, simply hold on to it. Left-click to place it. It's got to be near the edge of your raft, of course. Pick it up with E, and then left-click to throw it your raft will stop in its tracks. You want to try to stop your raft a bit of a distance from the island. Don't get too, too close. And the reason for that is when you hop in the water, our little sharky friend will tend to stay close to your raft and not necessarily follow you. 
If you're able to keep Bruce close to your raft, that means you're free to go explore the underwater of the island and harvest a lot more resources. If you can do this early on, it'll put you in a really, really good position and uh, help you advance a lot more quickly in the early game. Now when it does come time to fight our finned friend over here, um, there's a few tips to do it. First off, um, use a spear rather than a machete. The machete is a weapon that you get a little bit later in the game. The spear has got a bit of a longer reach. Um, if, if you have a bow and arrow, of course, that's got an even longer reach. We'll get a little closer here to Bruce so we can have a look. Now Bruce will eventually charge at you. He's not very hungry right now, is he? There we go. So Bruce will charge at you. You want to click as soon as he opens his mouth and you notice we'll hit him without taking any damage. If you're quick with it, you can sometimes get more than one shot in. Whoop! If you're not quick with it, he'll do a bit of damage to you. It takes a little bit of practice when you're getting used to it, but you'll find if you get in the rhythm, you can hit him once, twice, sometimes three times as he's passing by you. Now once you do defeat Bruce, Here's a great tip to earn yourself just a little bit more peace and quiet. You can harvest Bruce for four shark meat each time and one shark head. If you stop before harvesting the shark head, his body will not despawn. Now his respawn timer does not start until his old body despawns. If you simply leave him in this state here, you're free to go and harvest the minerals and uh, resources from the island with, uh, without our shark coming back to get you. Now eventually the body will despawn on its own, so if you'd like your arrows back if you've got them, or if you'd like the shark head, try to come back within a couple minutes and uh, finish that off. Um, otherwise it'll despawn on its own, but this is just a quick easy way to greatly increase the amount of free mining time that you've got on each island you visit. Also to note in the early game, you want to try to get as much sand and clay as you can. They're important for building smelters, which you'll really need on your raft right away. When it comes to engines, we all know that each engine has enough power to move 100 foundations. What, what a lot of people don't know is that that rule stays true up to a maximum of 600. Once your raft is larger than 600 foundations, you don't need to add any further engines. You'll notice my raft here has got eight engines, and that's actually overkill. It's more than I'll ever need. Um, I didn't know that rule when I was building this first raft, so I built it with eight instead of six. But if you're building a raft, there's no reason to ever go further than six engines. Honey is something that often comes up in discussion with raft. Um, if you scour YouTube, there are many, many brilliant designs for honey farms. This is the one that I use on my raft. Um, I'm a minimalist, and I enjoy things to look kind of clean and simple. Um, I've got my honeycombs inside this building, and beneath the floor, is where I like to keep the flower plots. Now the way that a honeycomb works is you've got to have 12 flowers of any kind within a short range of the honeycomb in order for it to generate three honeycomb, just like that. If you've got fewer flowers, it'll still work, but you'll generate less honeycomb per cycle. Um, now this is a great design because the flower plots are protected not just by one floor, but by a ceiling as well. And like I mentioned earlier, um, a seagull cannot fly through two layers. So you can keep these in here. You'll never have to refill them or rewater them. They'll always be there and they'll always be helping your honeycombs produce level three production. This uh, sprayer that I've set up under the floor was kind of a cool design, but I've realized it was overkill. Because the flowers will never be eaten, they'll never need to be replaced and they'll never need to be watered. Does your pinky finger ever ache after two hours of holding down the sprint key? Here's a great little tip. Open up the escape menu, go under settings, controls, and enable toggle sprint. When that's turned on, instead of having to hold down the sprint key, you just tap it once and it'll be on until you tap it again. No need to hold down that shift key anymore. And I've saved my favorite tip for last. Now this one's a little tough to show in a video, but if you ever found yourself in the situation where you're full of a certain resource, and you want to turn all of your leaves into rope. Now sure, you could sit there and click 200 times like this, 
But you'll find if you go on Google and you find software for your mouse, it's usually manufacturer specific, uh, you'll be able to download it and program a macro into your mouse. What I've done is I've got a special button on my mouse that uh, when I activate it, it rapidly clicks over and over again. You'll have to maybe find a YouTube tutorial on how to do this, but I highly recommend it for Raft uh, because you can turn this into this. And it'll really save your pointer finger. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Please leave your favorite tip in the comments below. This was my first time ever putting together a YouTube video like this. If you thought I did okay, please like and subscribe, and we can watch this channel grow together. Till next time.